Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. Glory be to the Lord. Let us go to the book of Exodus chapter 14. I won't keep you for long today. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I can already hear haters in the back. <laughs> hmm, two minutes, right? <laughs> Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. Exodus 14 and 13. Can we read it together? If you don't have a Bible, look at the screen. And next year, get a Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I actually recommend this. Can I, can, I tell you, can I tell you my prophetic secret? One. Can I tell you something? There is nothing. I'm, I, have, I use my cell phone Bible a lot. But if you go to my prayer room, I have hundreds of Bibles. Like literally hundred. Any position. He's been to my prayer room. Those who have been, they've seen it. Hundreds of Bibles. There is something about having a thing that is completely purely that. Because it is, it is um, a contact point. Because it is purely that. You see your cell phone, people call. There's Facebook. There's it. it is not dedicated to the purpose of spirituality. So it is like, think about if your anointing oil is the same one you cooked with, you, you lotioned with, you did everything with. Then it loses its potency. It is because it is sacred that it causes it to have power. You know, there is a Bible that cannot leave my room. That one, whenever I want to hear from God revelation, I go and pray there. It will just come in my spirit. There are Bibles. I have big Bibles. Some of them I even told uh, uh, Prophet Esteran to get me some when I was uh, preparing my prayer room. Daddy, you won't believe this. God told me this. This is, I'm sharing it with you because we are family. On my prayer altar... And Leah has been there a few times. On my prayer altar, I have a lot of Bibles where my altar is. But I have big Bibles that are on the floor. The Lord told me whenever you pray, you see, when you're praying by yourself, this is just advice. I know we are not in the topic, but I want to just teach you something. If you look in scripture and you look at heaven, whenever angels pray, they never pray standing up there on their knees. The 24 elders pray on their knees. Have an attitude in your own prayer time to learn to pray on your knees. It is the highest sign of honor. But there is something that God told me. He told me from today in this room, and Mama Gana has been there too. When you pray here, you're going to kneel on the scripture, on the big Bible. Your knees will be on there. I asked the Lord why he told me because I want you. To be centered on my word. So I, understand, I understood it was a prophetic thing. You see when Moses stood in the holy ground. God told him remove your shoes. Because the ground is holy. Why was it holy? The voice of God was emanating in the area. This is just. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you what I do in my prayer room. And I know what happens in that room. When uh, Josiah my son and his wife Heather. They were trying to have a baby. Trying to have a baby. Trying to have a baby. One day I just told them come home. They came to my house. I told them, kneel there. Just tell God what you want. They knelt. They prayed. I said, it is done. They left. Two, three days, we are pregnant. Ah, amen. Amen. Ah, you didn't hear what I just told you. Just like that. You see, you have to know how to give God a special place. Special place. That is why you need something like this. Sometimes you just take your Bible. You just, where you're sleeping, just put it there and lay your head. Say, Lord, this is your word. I, when you treasure those things, Jesus, you know, the Jews kissed the scriptures, the scrolls. They honored it too much. I say, yeah, I have it in my cell phone. That is not the point. I, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Power, the power, the anointing of God is transferred into things. It can go into a cloth. It can go into scripture. It can go into anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So when you have something that you know that is a part of him, treat it as such, things change. Amen. 
It is not just about reading. It is contact with the divine. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you some knowledge. There are times you tell me, put, set up the Bibles this way and be in the center and pray this way. All those things, all the time. You know, prophetic things look crazy. But when you see results, you realize, ah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All my Bibles in my prayer room, they all have the names of God on the side. You see like on the side here? Every name that God has that is in the scripture is there. Even the names that I've given him myself, they are there also. These are just things I'm telling you why you need to have something in your hand. Amen. Sometimes you need somebody to be healed and you don't have time. You just take your Bible. You know where it sits and you just put it on them. Mm. Just hold it. Yes. yes. Amen. Every year, I give away the Bible I used in the year. Wow. I will see. <laughs> Dre is like, <laughs> glory be to God. Glory be to God. Exodus th uh, 14, 13. So next year, I have a Bible. Amen. You will thank me later. Uh, uh, Mama Baxter, my mother, left me her Bible that she used for years. Wow. You know, spiritual prophets know certain things. Yes. Glory be to God. Glory, Glory be, be to, to God. God. Okay, Exodus 14, 13. Are we there? Yes. yes. One, two, three. And Moses, and Moses said, said unto, unto the people, people Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Amen. No, you didn't read that with your chest. Read it with your chest. And Moses said unto uh -uh. the people. One, two, three. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. I think you people read it wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Elias said ah. to the people. <laughs> good. Amen. Yeah. You may sit in heavenly places. I, I feel like you missed it. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, I want you to understand a few things about deliverance. And not only deliverance, because we have many aspects and dimensions of deliverance. Deliverance is not just when demons come out of you. It is deliverance, but it is not the only deliverance. I wish somebody could hear me. Deliverance is in dimensions and is in realms. There is deliverance from spiritual entities. There is deliverance from situations. And there is deliverance from self. Amen. I'll say that again. There is deliverance from spiritual entities, evil spirits. There is deliverance from situations. And there is deliverance from self. Amen. May, oftentimes people who want to be in deliverance or do deliverance do not understand the difference between deliverance from evil spirits and deliverance from self and deliverance from situations so they mix them all together and many a times they don't get results because they don't understand that your spiritual position determines the kind of deliverance you will receive mm. some says Many are the trials and tribulations of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them from all. It means deliverance is a consistent process in the life of a believer. Amen. I wish somebody could hear me. That's good. That's good. So deliverance is something that you will not need only one time. It is a consistent process because dependent on where you are in your spiritual life, it determines what kind of deliverance you need to receive. Yes. Okay. 
depending on your spiritual position, there are those that demons cannot enter them even if they were in a vulnerable position. Mm. The devil cannot enter them. Mm. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. You know, oftentimes people say that, they always say, uh, you know, uh, if you do this, you open the door to that. If you do this, you open. It is true. Why wasn't Solomon possessed after bringing gods into Israel? He brought many gods and even worshipped them and God was angry. But no demon entered him. Mm -hmm. David killed his friend. Messed up big time. No demon touched him. Samson, hey. Mm. <laughs> Visited every corner. <laughs> There was no, uh, 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 what is soul tie? Are you guys listening to me? Gotcha. There was zero soul tie. You see, oftentimes we group ourselves with everybody else, but we don't understand that we are all on a different dimension aspects. So many of you have subjugated yourself to what people thought of you what has happened to them, they have put the same level of deliverance to be a requirement to you, yet you have already surpassed that dimension and that level. Amen. I wish somebody could hear me. There are things that you are struggling with, you are struggling with them, not because it is a problem, but because you have been trained to make them a problem. The most difficult deliverance out of all of them is deliverance from self. Because what you have been taught becomes part of you. And you see everything through that sight. So it becomes very difficult to tap into what God has already even given to you. Mm. Now when you look at the children of Israel, it was their last day of captivity. In the morning, they rose up early and they left Egypt singing praises to God. But when they arrived at the Dead Sea, you realize that they were not yet delivered from Egypt because their mind was still being controlled by the Egyptians. Wow. They were delivered from the gods of Egypt because when you read in the scriptures, the Lord says, I will perform these signs and I will judge the demons and the spirits and the gods of Egypt. Many of you being here, God has already judged the demons in your family. I feel, I feel like Amen. I'm prophesying to myself. Amen. Demons of poverty, yes. demons of cancer, right. demons of confusion, demons of manipulation, yes. demons of disasters. Yes. What killed others in your family can no longer kill you. Amen. What held others in your family cannot hold you. Yes. The thought patterns, I feel like I'm talking to the church, is only here. I don't know if people are on the other side. But many of you, you are already free from what God had had done and performed in your family you're free from your families amen, amen. you are Hallelujah. free from your family patterns Hallelujah. Yes. you are free from this year's calamities Hallelujah. Yes. but because you are not delivered from self ah. uh, sit for two seconds we are going somewhere mm. help us ah. <laughs> Listen, listen to this. Whenever your dimension is about to change, whenever you are about to cross over to the other side, the deliverance you need will always be highlighted. That's good. The deliverance you need is not highlighted when you make a mistake. True. It is always exposed when the moment comes for you to transfer to the other side. Amen. Wow. Because that is the moment that that thing that is holding you that you did not know will fully manifest itself to keep you from crossing over. I am condemning every single thing. Amen. That is supposed to keep you from crossing over. Amen. Amen into your other level, your other dimension in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus 
Uh, sit for two seconds. Now capture this by the Spirit of God. Capture this. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, in the last days, people will give heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. Having their conscience seared and doctrines of devils. Having their conscience seared. Notice the goal of, of the devil is not to live in you. Because if he lives in you, it is easy for him to be cast out. But the moment he can put a mindset in you that he can use like an eye. You know how we, the animals are being branded like cows. I'm sorry if you're vegan. But they brand animals. Demon's goal is not to really live in you because if they can live in you, you meet Dr. Elias, he can say, hey. Amen. The demon will live. Amen. Amen. So he has to ensure his path to you is not disconnected. So through your trials and tribulations, his goal is to take an iron brand and to brand that false doctrine. That seducing doctrine in your mind. Because he knows that scar will take God for you to come out of. Wow. Wow. For 400 years and some change. The children of Israel, the children of God, Ronit and her cousins. <laughs> shalom, shalom. <laughs> they are in Egypt. Going through a process, they are crying, Lord, how long? Father, how long? God, how long? But their process and their situation caused them to be in the same place because they were a majority, but they could not see themselves as a majority because of the false doctrine that was inside of them. The children of Israel had multiplied more than the Egyptians. But the Egyptians had noticed that they are multiplying and they did not know that they are multiplying. You see, some of you, you are increasing, but you don't know that you're increasing. Wow. Wow. Uh, somebody of you didn't hear what I'm saying. Some of you are growing, but you don't understand that you're growing. The moment the Egyptians noticed, they began to make them do tasks. And they made them subject to certain things, but they still kept them in Gosham. You see, Gosham is still the most, it was the, the most pharaoh, the most blessed part of Egypt. How do we know this? When they came into Egypt, the pharaoh told Joseph, choose the best part of the land. You guys go and dwell there. So they chose Gosham. That is why they were multiplying because the ground was blessed. Mm. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You see, many of you, you are in places that are correct. But you don't understand that you have outgrown the place. Mm. Mm. Help us. You have outgrown poverty. Yes. Hey. Okay, these people, let me prophesy to the people on this side. You have outgrown poverty. Amen. You have outgrown poverty. Amen. Yes. Uh, this coming year, you can no longer be in a financial situation Amen. that you have always been in. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Yes. You have outgrown anxiety. Yes. You've walked with God too long to be anxious. Amen. You have outgrown confusion. Amen. You have outgrown fear. There are things that uh, there are things that you're supposed to be out of. Mm, sit for two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. I'm, I'm finalizing. I said today I won't keep you long. <laughs> I, have, I have about 36 minutes, 36 seconds to work. <laughs> so, so understand this by the spirit of God. Demons have no ability to know what you're thinking. They can influence your thoughts just like angels can influence your thoughts. Just like the Holy Spirit can influence your thoughts. The difference with God and the Spirit of God is that God actually knows the hearts of men. Yes. Mm. Demons don't have that access. They actually don't. Mm. People think that demons can read their mind because they have programmed you how to think. 
Wow. 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 Try. Some of you didn't hear what I said. Okay, have you ever asked yourself if demons know how you think? Some people with demons, how do they end up in church to be delivered? You are making plans, I'm going to go to church. Demons can't pick up the clue until, oh man. True. How, how did I end up here? That's good. <laughs> oh man, one way ticket to hell. Oh my God. <laughs> First class ticket. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Demons don't have that access. They, are, they have no access to man's spirit. They have access to your soul. They can program your soul. They can manipulate you so that they can form a pattern of thinking with you. Are, are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. yes. So whenever you are in a place and God wants to do something great with you, the devil can only tell if you have outgrown your territory. Mm. He starts understanding, mm, Mama Ghana. The queen of Wakanda. You are expanding too fast. But you see the problem is. We are not as detail oriented. As spiritual beings are. Spiritual beings are always observing what God is doing. Whether they are good or evil. They are always on the lookout. That is why the Bible says. Even Satan fears God. The word fear. And trembles. It means the fear is honor reverence it means when god is doing something he pays attention the trembling now is the real fear knowing that god has the power to destroy james says you fear the lord good even demons do even more and tremble it means that the devil is always observing what god is doing so when you grow 0 0.5 inches the devil can notice it you don't catch on to it quick because many of you are not delivered from self. You are so obsessed about where you're going that you're not noticing the progress you're making. Mm. Help us, Lord. We're teaching. Some of you didn't hear what I said. Some of you are still beating yourself up. Ah, the things I did this year. How, how could I keep like... Ah, but you don't realize, just even the fact that you realize that you missed some steps is a step forward. That's good. Amen. If you cannot see your error, if you cannot see where you missed it, it means you have not moved forward. I don't know if somebody is catching what I'm saying. We're catching. The evidence of growth, the evidence of growth is when you can realize, oh, I missed it. You see, when we used to be in the world, there are things we did not think that were wrong. When we got into Christ, we realized that they were wrong. So we started moving differently. Sure. That is growth. Okay, you used to eat bad. <laughs> now you eat clean. You're, the point is you're still eating. Mm. That's good. You don't become healthy when you lose weight. You become healthy when you eat right. Amen. And the more you eat right, the body also... Apart from how the body feels, the body begins to what? Change. One of my fight coaches is here, Coach Keenan. He's a, you will not know that he's a very dangerous guy. Coach Keenan, please stand and just wave to people. If you ever want to get in shape, find this man. Amen. And I remember when I wanted to like bring my weight down to a certain place, he was like, love you, got to eat. I was like, how can I eat to go down? Said, no, trust me, man, you gotta eat. One week. <laughs> no ab workout, nothing, just eating. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But the thing that I noticed was not that I lost my stomach first, is I felt so much different when we were training. Mm. I caught myself, okay, I should be tired right now. Why am I not getting tired? Why am I having so much? Then I started realizing, oh. The food is working. You see, when God is doing something in you, you have to be able to keep tabs of your progress. 
you tell yourself, this thing would have broken me 10 years ago, Amen. five years ago, Amen. six months ago, but I'm here and I am standing. Hallelujah. I am here and I'm standing. It would have scared me, but now my reflex is rabashanda labakarabasha. Amen. My, I am ref, my reflex is prayer. Is not panic, is not confusion. Yes. There is a change because my spiritual diet has changed. Amen. Amen. Many of you don't realize this, therefore, you knock yourself down mm. and you don't build confidence because you see, faith is not just believing in what God has established that is already substance, but part of faith is you believing in you. Mm, that's good. Let me give you an example. Have you ever noticed when somebody is sick, like the lady we had on Thursday, deaf on both ears, hearing aids, I'm talking even with the hearing aids, she can't really hear me. Until I was offended a little bit. I'm like, I'm prophesying deep to you like this. <laughs> Daddy, I was like, I won't prophesy. You know, there are two things that make me prophesy deep. When somebody's responding, or when I feel like you're doubting me, ah, ah. I'll prove to you. <laughs> so, I said, you, you, I won't prophesy if you're not listening to me. So, I started going deep years when the stroke happened, when this happened. Then the sister started saying, she can't really, I said, oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I realized that, then I told her, you'll be delivered today. You'll be healed today. Amen. But you see, other people will be like, okay, let's pray. And perhaps God will heal. Let me not promise anything because I don't know what God will do. Those are people that don't know themselves. You see, the Lord Jesus walked with the confidence that he was the son of God. Are you not a son, daughter of God? Why do you walk without confidence? Amen. Amen. Is because you highlight your weaknesses more than the good that God has put in you. Wow. Yet love conquers all things. The good in you is greater, better than any error you can ever commit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The grace in you is heavier. Cannot be outweighed by the little mistake you did. Who doesn't make mistakes? Greater is he that is in you than the mistake you did externally. But you make your external mistakes greater than the grace, the God that is inside of you. So if you don't have, to believe in God is to believe in yourself. When you look at God and you say, you are my father, you realize your DNA, you say, I am truly an expression of you. Amen. It is not about me, it is about you. And because you have made me about you, I will walk like I am you. I will manifest you. I will speak like you. I will walk like you. Amen. I will talk like you. I will make sure I represent you more than myself. You see, everything that is weak is you. Everything that is good and perfect is him. Amen. So whenever you are doing his will, you are manifesting him and not you. Yes. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, come out of the way. Come neighbor, out come of, out the, of way. the way. Neighbor, step out of the way. Neighbor, step, step out, out of the, the way. way. So whenever I look at a situation, it is not me. I don't care about me. Mm. <laughs> hey, it has nothing to do with me. I told the lady you'll be delivered. I prayed for other people first, uh, and the angel of the Lord wait, said, wait, let us sit, let's help the other people, let's finish with this one. Then I came to her at the end, the mighty name, yes. touched her ears, say, amen, amen, pastor. Ah. <laughs> oh, she was saying pastor before he changed. Amen, prophet. I said, eh? you come here. She said, yes, I can hear you. I stood here. I said, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You see, that is because you know. Yes. Easily like that. Doctors couldn't do it. Nobody could do it, but Jesus can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Your Jesus is about to deliver something into you. Man. Especially those who are clapping their hands, celebrating the Lord. Man. Those who understand beyond the shadow of knowing. Hallelujah. Those who know beyond their knower, deep inside them. God is able to deliver something spectacular in your life. Just like that. Just like that. The woman left, okay, she went did a testimony. Went home. Free of church. 
Dr. Jesus. Amen. Imagine Dr. Jesus, the best surgeon in the world. Amen. Amen. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. The best surgeon because he has human body parts that he created. Yes. He's the only one who has <laughs> spare parts. Specifically for you. Yes. Change the woman's eardrums, everything. The woman's, I can hear you, prophet. <laughs> it wasn't even like, huh? No, I can hear you. Yep. <laughs> Just like that. Whenever you are at the finish line, crisis manifests more. Whenever you are at the finish line, problems manifest more. When you're in the midst of it, eh, it will be something you feel like you can handle. But when it is at the finish line, when it is at the end whereby you are about to enter into the greatest breakthrough you can handle. It is at that moment, it is at that hour that every demon, even the one that you did not think is a demon, becomes a demon. Brother, so sister, so that you thought they were not a demon, that day they will become a demon. Cousin, so that you know, <laughs> even you, you'll be surprised. You'll be like, ah, ah, Lord, who did I offend in this life? That moment, everyone would turn against you, and you don't understand. When the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, everybody was cool. Nobody was thinking about it is time to cross over. You see, whenever you see water, Whenever you see water in scripture, it always represents a place of transition. Mm, that's good. Always represents a place of what? Transition. Whenever there is a great spiritual elevation experience transformation, a body of water is always presented. When you're about to enter into new life, when you give yourself to Jesus... You have to be baptized to seal it. I feel like somebody did not catch it. Do you know that when you get to heaven, this thing, when you visit heaven, you're not allowed to go into this because if you go into this, you're not coming back. There are few things that when you visit heaven, you're not allowed to do if you are still going to come back to this world. One of them, they will not allow you to get into the river of life. Because the moment you enter into that water, every earthly desire is gone. Wow. Not that you forget earth, but every single earthly desire goes. That is usually the first process when you get to heaven. You'll be embraced and then you'll be led to go and be washed. The moment you enter like this, you come out. You know how people say that you look young. No, when people go to heaven, they don't you look young yet. When they enter into that water, they come out on the other side, different person. Wow. Mm, wow. Now, this is real. This is 100% real. When they enter, they come out. And the funny thing is that when you enter into that water, you come out, you're not wet. <laughs> when you enter into the water, you can breathe underwater because there's no death there. In fact, when you go there, this is funny. When you get there and you go in, you'll see people playing down there, chilling, talking. It's, it's very, heaven is a strange place. Be beautiful, strange place. Number two is the food that they have there. You can't eat from the trees if you're coming back. If you eat, you will stay. They will actually refuse to give it to you. Interesting, huh? It's very interesting. But whenever there is a transition, there is always water. When a baby is about to be born, they have to go through water. Life on earth came from water. I, I don't know if somebody's catching me. Catching. Whenever something wants to happen, water is always involved. Why? We don't know. That's just how God made it to be. Do you believe that when you were in your mother's womb, you used to breathe underwater? 
You are born, you see water, you don't see it's a place of transition, you see it's a place of death. You know, when Andrew was born, uh, when Andrew was born, I always wanted to put him like into swimming. And his grandmother actually did that, his grandfather, he was swimming since he was young. But when a baby is born, you throw them in the pool, they know how to swim, you know that? Natural, in fact, they remember, oh, I know this. (laughs) After a few years, they forget where they came from. We all do. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Water always represents transition. When the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, everybody was chilling as long as the the Egyptians were not coming. Because their goal was to physically leave Egypt, but God wanted to deliver their minds from Egypt. So when they stood before the Red Sea, everybody was cool. They could see the cloud of the Lord that was with them and the angel of the Lord being in there. They could see the angel of the Lord. And by the way, the angel of the Lord, when you see the word angel of the Lord, um, it has double meanings. It depends on which angel actually is talking about. Because the word angel simply means messenger. Malak means messenger. And, and there are many times when you see the angel of the Lord, it's actually talking about Jesus. The angel of his presence, the angel of his face. Many a times it's actually Christ, God in the form of man. Because you notice some passages are very strange. Unless you know what I'm telling you. So God is with them. The cloud of the Lord is with them. Ah, They are cool. The moment the Egyptians show up, they forget that the presence of God is with them. They forget all the deliverances that happened during Egypt. You see, many of you, this is the issue. When you get to the point of deliverance, the place of salvation, you don't stand. You don't remain still. You move back from where you came from. I am not saying you won't feel the fear or things like that. But your strength is in standing in what God has already established. You see, what God has said, what God has established is actually solid ground. It is proven ground. It defied what should have killed you. So it is the best place to stand. The children of Israel began to complain to Moses. Well, they are not better graves. So they were already okay with dying. That is their first statement. Moses, did you bring us to the wilderness to die? Were there not better graves in Egypt? It means that for them, death was inevitable. Death was going to happen anyway. But we rather die where there are cemeteries where we can be buried. Imagine that is the mindset. That is their mind. That is their thoughts. That is how they are viewing themselves. Many of you, you are not preparing yourself. You are not analyzing yourself to understand that because I have come to the end of the year, what should have destroyed me didn't destroy me. Then I know that he has no power over me. Amen. Uh, I wish you could hear me. It means it has zero power over me. Amen. It means he can do nothing to me. True. So if I stand here, then I will see the deliverance of God. You see, the deliverance is not felt, but is seen. Mm, that's good. Wow. Deliverance is something you watch God do. Oh. Wow. It means God is placing you in a position where you have the best view. So you see your problems magnified, not because it is powerful, But God is giving you a front seat so that you may see your deliverance. I feel like I'm, let me talk to people over here that understand. You're teaching, Papa. God is putting you at a high place where you can see every single thing that looks like should have killed you. 
not so that it will kill you but so that you can witness deliverance amen amen look at your neighbor say neighbor i am watching my deliverance neighbor i am watching my deliverance neighbor i can see my deliverance neighbor i can see my deliverance neighbor i am witnessing my deliverance neighbor i am witnessing my deliverance glory hallelujah I, I don't know if you're catching what I'm saying. We're catching. So this is a necessity for you to, to, to capture. The Bible says it like this. And Moses said unto them, fear not, stand still. Stillness. You stand, but if you're not still, you're still not standing. Mm. Let me say that again. Stand still. He did not just say stand. Stand still. The word still there, I forget how to pronounce it in Hebrew. The word still literally means stay at a location, specific location. To stand means remain, still specific location. So if you're standing, but you're not standing still, then you're not standing. Wow. That's good. So to stand still is not just, okay, I am, I am in this place, Lord, do. Because you see, physically, you can't move out of the situation. That doesn't mean you're standing still. Mm, that's good. That's good. Apostle, am I speaking to some? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Just because I am in the situation doesn't mean I'm standing still. Hello? Hello? Just because I'm in the situation doesn't mean I'm standing still. It doesn't mean that at all. It has nothing to do with that at all. How many people you know they've been in the same situation and you ask them to say, I'm still trusting God. Yeah. Ten years, mm, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> He will do it for me. Mm. 50 years. Mm, I'm waiting on the Lord. 70 years. Oh, God will come soon. <laughs> oh, my deliverance is almost here. <laughs> oh, yes. My deliverance. All this they are saying because they are comforting themselves. But in reality, God is not a liar. He is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Amen. If you take, you see, one thing I love about the scriptures, and uh, a great prophet called A. Allen said this. He said, if you take turkey and you put it in an oven, you won't bring out cornbread. True. Even though cornbread is sweet, it's good. <laughs> but you put in turkey, you need turkey out. Some of you, the problem is you're putting in chicken, but you're expecting beef ribs. <laughs> Some of you didn't get what I'm saying. Yes. The oven will just cook it and make it better, mm. edible. Many of you, you want to put the wrong thing and reap the best thing. Mm. That's good. Okay, you see, some people are being offended out here. Some of you are being offended because you're not listening to what I'm saying. Get offended, I love it. Let it poke you so you can be delivered. You cannot put in <clears throat> chicken wings and get a turkey leg. It's not a pyramid scheme. Yeah, you get somebody to do this, then you multiply this. Uh -uh. You reap what you sow. If you plant mangoes, you get a tree that produces a lot of mangoes. But it won't all of a sudden change into apples. Right. It's the same thing with ministry. I am Dr. Prophet this, but everything they do is pastoral. Ooh. Nothing wrong with that. It's fine. Just be pastor. Nothing wrong with it. You save souls. I admire Joel Osteen, big time. 
Look at how many souls he's brought to the Lord. It doesn't matter what you feel about him. He's winning souls from Jesus, for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Period. If you have not won the amount of souls he's winning, shut up. Sit somewhere. It's really simple. Yeah, it's the truth. You know, some Christians, they just, you know, I don't know where, we, I don't know which, I don't know when we, we uh, at the church had the department of investigations. <laughs> well, you saw him, he's too nice. Okay, did you, were you there when God was assigning him his job? Are you in the, deep, are you in the 24 elders? <laughs> when God is making his decisions. Look at him, look at him. Mm -mm. Why should he have that? A man of God. Ah, what is your problem? But you see, all this is because people have no understanding of God. So capture this. To stand still is to understand what God has done for you. The Bible says that there is no trouble you have experienced that is, is new to man. You yourself have experienced the same thing. Stop making it like it's the end of the world. God is literally telling you, Satan is lying to you to make it seem like it's something that has never happened. Newsflash, it has happened to you, it will happen to others, and it's happened to people before you. But guess what? There is always a way out. Amen. Amen. So if you don't stand still, I'm here to talk to somebody. Amen. If you don't stand still and realize that it is the place of stillness that deliverance is manifested. Amen. Not the place of worry, not the place of confusion, right. but in the understanding that what he did yesterday, yes. he's able to do it today, he will do it tomorrow, Amen. he will do it next year, yes. he will do it next week, Amen. he will continue. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Amen. When you begin to understand this truth, there is something that shifts inside of you. You look at the devil say, give me your best shot. Yes. He throws something else. You ask him, is that all that you have? Amen. You might want to do another one because when I give you mine, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Amen. When I open my mouth and begin to call on my father. Hallelujah. When I open my mouth and call on my father. Lazarus will come out of the grave. Amen. It doesn't matter that it has died for three days, right. three years, ten years. That situation will only shift if you are in a place of stillness. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. Be, still. be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And the see the salvation of the Lord. Of the Lord. I'm Glory. finishing. I have eight minutes. Sit for two seconds. Two seconds. Uh, uh. Look at your neighbor. Say, mm. 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 High five your neighbor. Say, neighbor, stand still. Neighbor, stand still. High five that neighbor. Say, neighbor, stand still. Neighbor, stand still. High five another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I am standing still. Neighbor, I am standing still. I find another neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you standing still? Neighbor, are you standing still? Find another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I see you standing still. Neighbor, I see you standing still. So, so listen to this. Stand still and see the salvation. Some of you, God just needs to touch your eyes to understand salvation. Because many times, uh, uh, Daddy, I always tell people this. I always explain to people this. They think salvation is only giving your life to Jesus. The fullness of that salvation is when your life is being delivered consistently continually what your father failed in you no longer fail in amen. it means that you have been delivered from the failures of the family amen what your mother died of you will not die of amen yes. it means salvation has entered your family hallelujah what they could not do you begin to do it means 
salvation has entered your family. Amen. Look at your neighbor say, stand still. Stand still. still. See the salvation. See, See the, the salvation. salvation of the living God. Of the, of the living, living God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Watch this. Watch this. The problem is you don't understand that when God says stand still, it means leave it to me. Mm, that's good. I feel like I'm talking to myself. That's good, Papa. The Lord is saying to somebody that is listening to my voice. Amen. Leave those haters to me. Amen. Leave those issues to me. Amen. Cast those burdens unto me. Amen. Stop working. Stop yes. doing. Your strength is not enough. Yes. Your words are not enough. Yes. But I am more than enough. Amen. Amen. I am able to deliver. I am able to save. Yes. I am able to give. Amen. I am able to lift up. Yes. I am able to open doors. I am able to transform. Yes. I am able. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You're talking, talking to us. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You're talking, Papa. Stand and see. Yes. This year you're only going to watch and see. Eh? Amen. I feel Amen. like I'm talking to myself. You are only going to watch and see change begin to change. Yes. And I will see. Look at your neighbor say, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. Jesus has done it all. Jesus, Jesus has, has done, done it all. I'm just going to stand and watch. I'm not going to stand, gonna stand and, watch. and watch. I will see. 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 Hallelujah. I began to understand the scripture. I will see the goodness of God. Yes. Not when I am dead and I am in heaven. Yes. Not through my children only. But I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. It means I will be alive when I am a billionaire and I will enjoy it. Amen. Hallelujah. I will see. I will be cancer free and enjoy the blessing. Amen. I, see. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Oh, Papa. Stop waiting for heaven. Heaven is inevitable. Yes. Uh, I feel like somebody doesn't hear me. Before your last breath on earth, you must see the goodness. See the goodness. Yes. Experience the goodness. Yes. Know the goodness. That is why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you stand still, you're telling God, show me your goodness. Amen. Look at your neighbor, say, Lord, Lord, show me your goodness. Show me your goodness. Your goodness. Lift your voice and say, Lord, Lord, my father, my father. My father, my father. Show me your goodness. Show me your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you, listen to this. The Egyptians you saw, they are already destroyed. But because you did not stand still, you are still living in the panic of what Egyptians should have done. Yet the Egyptians are gone because you never rose up and watched. Wow. You are not still to see the view of the Egyptians being destroyed. Wow. Some of you, you think it is your past haunting you. No, it is your mind haunting you. Wow. Ah, let me say that one more time. Some of you, you think it is your past haunting you. No. Ah. This is why it is good to be still. Standing on the rock. Standing on the high tower. With the ability to see. Oh, that's what he did. So if a demon comes and pretends that they're thing is still there you look and you tell them listen i saw the devil from fall, fall from heaven yes. like lightning Amen. i saw cancer fall like lightning yes. i saw demons fall like lightning yes. i saw generational curses fall like lightning i saw those things i saw it i saw it Amen. i was there when the family was delivered i was there when the blessing came down i know what god has done it doesn't matter what you try to put 
stand in front of me. Yes. I saw it and I know it. Amen. Listen to me. I am finishing now. One minute. The goodness of God. The blessing of God. The salvation of God. Maketh rich. And adds no sorrow. Yes. Amen. You see sorrows are things of the past. The regrets of the past. I feel like I'm talking to myself. God is about to take away every regret in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Every regret in your thoughts. Amen. Every sorrow that you have experienced in the year. Amen. You are about to forget it. Because the blessing of God is coming upon you. Amen. Because you have been standing still. Yes. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. Look at your neighbor say, grace has located me. Grace has located me. Look at them say, grace has come upon me. Grace has, has come, come upon me. The hand of the Lord is upon me. The hand of the Lord is upon me. I am in the salvation of the Lord. I am in the salvation of the Lord. I know that I know that I know that I know. I know that I know that I know that I know. There is a change in my life. There is a change in my life. I am in the last Sunday of the year. I am in the last Sunday of the year. It means I will see all the Sundays of next year. It means I will see all the Sundays of next year. Today the sorrows of the year end today. Today the sorrows of the year end. Lift up your voice, begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Say, my father, 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 my father. I am ready to cross over. 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 Out of poverty, out of poverty, out of anxiety, out of anxiety, out of limitations, out of limitations. I am ready to cross over. I am ready to cross over. Hallelujah. Put your right hand on your head. Say favor. Favor. Locate me. Locate me. Favor. Favor. Come upon me. Come upon me. Favor. Favor. Come upon me. Come upon me. In the name of Jesus. 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 Grace. Grace. Abundant grace, abundant grace upon my head, upon my head. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh anointing. The breaker anointing, the breaker anointing. My next level, my next level, my next level, my next level is with this oil, is with this oil, this oil, this oil upon my head, upon my head is taking me, is taking me. On the other side, on the other side, to the other side, to the other side. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. Hallelujah. Parote Evilo, Sangre Eliso, Zakato, Zakato, Merabasika, Paradiga, Antro, Zepron de Gida, Acreida, Antoria, Zeprada Gida, Alia Mates, Frevediga, Ancron de Kinda, Ancro Kida, Ante, Zepron de Kilia, Asu, Eka, Made Kida. Elia, Tongrefa, Astia, Leasta, Proosia, Endor, Ople, Esai, Siando, Fraigo, Costel, Mare, Miabon, Loar, Elisto, Usar, Ute, Isistor, Medina, Costia, Roda, Esia, Abokia, El Elmo, Obia, Milio, Save Favor! In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. I shift in my spirit. A shift in my spirit. I shift in my soul. A shift in my soul. I shift in my mind. A shift in my life. Acceleration on my feet. Acceleration in my speed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Begin to pray for speed. Listen to me. The Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Amen. Are you still here? Yes. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Lift your right hand to heaven. Shout, I receive the power. I receive the power. To finish well. To finish well. Ah, you're not saying it with confidence. Say, I receive power. I receive power. To finish well. To finish well. I receive power. I receive power. I receive authority. I receive authority. I receive power. I receive power. I receive authority. I receive authority. To finish well. To finish well. This year. This year. I am finished. Well. I am finishing well. This year, I am finishing well. I am finishing well. I receive the power. I receive the power. I receive the power. I receive the authority. I receive the authority. Lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Power to finish well. I will finish well. I will finish well. La carabashata, rekete de kida, rapara kida ange. Lift your voice like thunder. I have power to finish my business. I will finish my business. I have power to finish my business. I have power to I have power to accomplish my business. I have power to accomplish my business. I have power to accomplish my destiny. I have power to accomplish my destiny. I have power. I have power. Lift up your voice, declare it. I declare I have power. I have power. I declare I have power. Lebra diga. Over my bed. Zebra de kita. Zebra de kita. Repeta kita. Acro de. Zebra 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 are you still here? Yes. yes. I said, are you still here? Yes. There is a shit. Oh, Lord Jesus, I feel it inside my Hallelujah. spirit. Hallelujah. I see a vision in the realm of the spirit. Amen. I said I see a vision in the realm of the spirit. Yes. My God, my God, I see a vision in the realm yes. of the spirit. Hallelujah. I saw a cherubim with a coal touching your lips. Ah. I and I hear whatever you will declare tonight. Yes. Whatever you declare today. Afternoon, Amen. you have been anointed, Hallelujah. your lips are purified. Hallelujah. Begin to prophesy over your life now. Prophesy, prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy. Declare upon your life. You have been approved. You have been approved. You have been approved. Speak. Shall be power. Shall be power. Shall be fire. Le pokre Elena Asoya. Zembrokelia Tosha. Zembrokoli Ataya. 
Zindo, 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 Zindo. Lembro Batista, sai la cosia stebra. Lembro Batista, Helio Rossi. Listen, the Holy Spirit brought me to Psalms. And this is what the word of God says. My lips is a pen of a ready writer. Now you didn't hear what I said. My lips is the pen of a ready writer. The Bible says you are a living epistle. It is your opportunity to write the gospel of divine. The gospel of Rio, the gospel of Chaz, the gospel, it is your time. Others, wait, 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 listen. Others wait to see things unfold. But when you are approved, what you say is what unfolds. Hallelujah. No, you didn't hear what I said. Some pray to see something happen. But when you stand still, your lips will declare what will happen. Amen. I release the prophetic grace upon you. I receive. receive. Whatsoever you shall declare, I feel it in my spirit. I receive. My God, my God. I feel it in my spirit. Begin to declare the things that you will finish this year as you enter into the next year. Lift up your voice like thunder. Begin to prophesy. Prophesy, 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 prophesy. Lift up your voice. Move around, walk around, prophesy. Declare it, declare it. Rapata la ba 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 shanta. Hey! Hey! Thank you. 